come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show. This is an important episode because this is the 400th episode of the Saturday Night Freak Show. We want to thank you for listening, and we're very excited to have been doing this for like eight freaking years at this yeah. point. Yeah. Can, can, can you insert cheering at that point when you, meant, when you said 400? <laughs> or a slow clap. Yeah. Well, yeah. D- or, like, or just you know, a, like two scattered claps just echoing. <laughs> right, right, exactly. I just, no, I just want a, a very distant. Woo. <laughs> well, maybe we could try it again. All right, here we go. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the to Mr. Chicken at a boy Luther. Yeah. Well, you one of those. Oh, what? From the Ghost of Mr. Chicken, where he's like Adam Boy Luther. Come on, the Ghost of Mr. Chicken, Don Knotts. I'm not that familiar with that movie. Uh, I have not Ooh. seen that movie. Love that I think, movie. I think Sven Gulli showed it the other night, though. I am ashamed. He shows it a lot. I haven't seen no. it. Well, you're probably wondering, if this is your first rodeo, you're probably wondering who you're listening to. These are the internet radio superstars. Holly. Michaela. Sean. And I'm Colin. And tonight we will celebrate the uh, 400th episode of the Saturday Night Freak Show. We asked some of you, our, you know, our longtime listeners, what you liked about this show, and you told us. We're gonna we're gonna read the, collectively all of that stuff in our, our Igor's mail, mailbag segment, which is gonna come up after we talk about the romantic comedy drama fantasy thriller movie that we watched tonight which White was chosen crime. by <laughs> uh, chosen by holly holly what no it was not chosen by holly. Holly. it's michaela we Shit. even practiced this god damn it Sean. 400 <laughs> episodes and you fucked it up god damn it i mean it would it really be an episode if i didn't fuck it up <laughs> to be fair it was a fair mistake <laughs> son of a bitch Holly and I have been having a, a lot of overlap on our list lately, so it's fair. Yeah, it's fair. Yeah, it's fair. Uh, Michaela, uh, we exercised a demon tonight, finally. What did we watch on the Saturday Night Freak Show? We watched the oft-talked-about ghost. <laughs> From the year. And yeah, directed by. It was directed Zuc- by Jerry Zucker. A Zucker brother. Mm-hmm. Part of Zaz, right? You remember Zaz? Zucker, Zucker and Zucker, yeah. No, Zucker Abrams and Zucker. Yeah. What are they mm-hmm. famous for? Well, Jerry Zucker directed Airplane, Top Secret, Rat Race, The Naked Gun, Secret. right? Wasn't that the uh, Hot gun. Shots? These guys yeah. are comedy directors. Yeah, so he had a niche. Well, they were niche. Uh, were they Kentucky Fried Movie? Also, they were part of that whole crew and doing like uh, parody uh, movies. And then they then David, you're saying David, right? He broke off and then did Ghost, which was like out of left field <laughs> in 1990. Um, mm-hmm. It's probably um, this movie was written by. Uh, do you know? Yeah, Bruce Joel Rubin, who wrote another fantastic 90s movie, Jacob's Ladder, which actually there's a lot of parallels between Jacob's Ladder and this movie. Interesting. Um, well, and that, Deep Impact. Nice. And a, he, speaking my language. he also did, um, way, way back in the day, I believe he did uh, Wes Craven's Dudley Friend, which nobody remembers that movie, but you may have seen the meme. That's the one where uh, Christy Swanson, I think it was her first role, plays the undead robot teenager next door who throws a basketball at Ann Ramsey's head and blows it up with a basketball. She throws oh, it back. Oh, my God. I've seen that. Yeah. Oh, shit. All right. Well, yeah. I've never seen, seen this, so it's gift, coming. At least. <laughs> I literally just watched that trailer today thinking about it for my next pick. Well, there you, well, there you go. Literally Written today. by Joel Bruce Joel Rubin. Um, this Put was him on the wall, Holly. Well, have we we haven't done Jacob's Ladder yet? I would, which that surprises me. Yeah, uh, actually, sure, it surprises me it. too. Uh, because well, now they've remade Jacob's Ladder. That was a classic of the uh, that Jacob's Ladder was the first movie I saw in the 1990s where I sat there and said, uh, "This is the announcement of what 90s horror is going to be." You know, it's a psychological, very different than 80s horror. 
Jacob's Ladder and Ghost were part of a trilogy that, um, well, it's a thematic trilogy that uh, Bruce Joel Rubin wrote. Uh, the third one is a movie called My Life. Anybody seen this with uh, Michael, Michael Keaton? Keaton? Yeah, and uh, Nicole Yeah, he's going to die. Because they're all about dealing death. with death. <laughs> Relatable. Dealing with your personal demons while yes. you're dying. Yes, that is his theme. He is very interested in death, dying, the dying process, and the afterlife. Um, he also wrote, uh, really quick, he did a movie called Brain Scan. I think it was his first uh, film screenplay that he wrote. Uh, that was the final movie of Natalie Wood. It's got Christopher Walken in it. But uh, to us, because we are from the area, uh, Bruce Joel Rubin um, was a professor at uh, Northern Illinois University in DeKalb when he wrote uh, both, I believe, Jacob's Ladder and ghost or he came up with the idea oh, of ghost wow cool while that's where working. i went to college i'm so proud yeah Aww. your alma mater I and know. they didn't tell you about that did you he had to you no, had to come didn't. to the saturday night freak show to learn that about your alma mater <laughs> Why is it not? colin and i you only talks about two celebrities that ever and it's cindy crawford which she didn't even go there she was just from decalb and Dan Castellaneta from The Simpsons went to NIU. And those are the only two they ever talk about. Oh, wow. I thought uh, Richard Jenkins. Yeah. Once he got Oscar nominated, they started talking about okay. him, but okay. not until then. <laughs> Funny how that happens. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, Ghost, you're, you may be wondering, uh, longtime listener, what the hell Ghost <laughs> is doing on this show? Because, it's I mean, a Ghost movie. Generally, we do offbeat, non mainstream. We haven't done Colin, like I a, just did a whole summer of blockbuster movies. That's very true. And we did Broken Arrow did. last, uh, last <laughs> week. Um, no but, <laughs> but Ghost is a um, a movie that it turns out is a very it's a formulative movie in the lives Absolutely. of most of the freak show family here. Uh, <laughs> it would, maybe it would appear it, so. Yeah, uh, right. Because this surprised the fuck out of me. I was 16 years old and working in a movie theater and Ghost was one of the movies that we had. And that thing played. Forever is what how I remember it. It like never. It was Ghost was one of those movies that never went away. <laughs> and so, well, Colin, feels, do you know how much money it made? Lots. How much? Five hundred million dollars. Nice. Shit. Yeah, that it was estimated it. that this movie sold fifty-one million theater tickets. Holy shit. Well, that's a lot. Is, but that's the thing. Yeah. I think this movie has a, a cross. Uh, what well, the four quadrants, right? They have the movie, movie, uh, uh, professionals they always try yes. to hit like one of you know, you're trying, it's like a Venn diagram of the quadrants of certain demographics and interests. And this I movie think it's hits them a, all, it's more of an XY. That's what you're gonna look at. What are they? Well, uh, women, I'm guessing, is one of them. Yes, no. I mean, just I don't know. I are you was talking asking about demographics, you. or are you talking about genre? The quadrants. I don't know. Whatever. We we're saying that it it uh, it it has a long term appeal to uh, many different people. I think because, but primarily, it's a movie that um, gives you a positive. Um, it, it believes in an afterlife. Yes. It's right? a very positive outlook on the afterlife. Maybe because not there is there. one in this movie, yeah. right? It's like this is. I, the I know why this movie is popular. I'm very confident in my like belief in why this movie is popular. This movie is wish fulfillment. If you've lost someone close to you, that like the end of this movie is the ultimate closure. Yep. Yeah. Like we all wish we could have the moment she has at the end of this movie. That's why people love it. Mm -hmm. Yep. A lot of catharsis in this. Yeah, I feel like I just had a therapy session after watching it, honestly. Right? I let, I let go of some things tonight. Mm -hmm. Okay, so well, tell me about that. I mean, because everybody's seen Ghost, so recapping the plot is, uh, I mean, this is one of the most popular movies that's pr probably ever been made, and especially through the 1990s. If you lived in the 1990s, you've seen it. So I guess, yeah. uh, you know, me saying Are new here, people saying this? Do you think? 
See, that's hard for me to know because I was just so raised on it that I don't know if adults now would like, actually, I watched this with my husband and this was his first time watching it. And I was kind of shocked because I was like, like, how did you, he's older than me. So I was like, how did you escape this? But yeah. um, And I thought for sure we would start watching it and he'd be like, oh yeah, I've seen this, but that never, he was like, no, I've just seen like the famous clips, but I've never actually seen the movie. And he told me he was surprised by the movie because it was much more like urban fantasy than he thought it was going to be. Yeah. He said he thought it was going to be a straight romantic movie. And he was surprised by the paranormal aspect. That is what people get wrong about this. There is like literally two romance scenes in this movie and they're just a few minutes long. The rest of it, nothing to do with romance. Oh, what the hell are you talking about? No, it's 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 built on romance. (laughs) Yes. Nothing to do with romance. It's built on. It's the foundation of it. But then, right, get, but then it really splits off into white collar crime and like a murder mystery and yeah. urban fantasy. It has a lot. That's why this movie is so successful is because it touches so many genres. Yeah. Yes. It I, is not a straight romance by any means. Like, no, if you, no. I've you watched romance movies like this is not a full fledged romance movie at all. Holly, I am totally going to disagree well, most, with you. It is, it is a, I mean, that is the core of what this movie is, is the romance of the guy trying to communicate with his love through the no, entire movie. No, and he core, can't talk the to her core is him trying to save her life. That is the core of it. And that because can, he loves her. Yeah, yeah. He loves her, but it could be his brother. Man. It could be anyone. The core no. of the movie is him trying no. to save someone his life. Someone but here's the thing. Most romance movies are about the meet cute and the start of the relationship and like how they're going to get together. This movie is like post their relationship almost yes. entirely. No, yeah. this movie is the is the meet cute and get together of Demi Moore and Whoopi Goldberg. Like that's your that kind of takes that in. that that kind of takes that point. I'm down with that. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> they do that. They do the meet cute and then, you know, they're good and then something you know, something goes wrong and they separate and they get back to each other. It's, it's classic romance setup. It's just between those two characters. <laughs> this movie does uh, something because I think I was also in uh, Toby's boat in uh, that's a uh, Michaela's husband in. Uh, <laughs> Is that a in, metaphor? What? Oh, <laughs> the, shit, now we're in the docks, Colin. Everyone's going to know about us now. I was in the wheelhouse. Uh, sorry about that. I'll edit that out. Uh, <laughs> no, no, it's fine. I, we don't care. Uh-huh. I was in beeps. <laughs> <laughs> but in 1990, when this came out, the marketing for it, the, the, the push for the movie was that it was a, this is a romantic comedy. I mean, it has uh, Whoopi Goldberg in it, right? And she's funny. And it's got Patrick Swayze and Zany Hijinks and Sue. And so I was surprised. I think I probably had the same experience that he did watching it tonight, that it was like, oh, this isn't actually the movie that I thought it was going to be. It is more like, uh, because I guess the thriller aspect and the drama of the story was what kind of like drew me into it. This movie does, and I may be giving away something here about my my wrap up. Maybe I should save it. I'm just going to go ahead with it. Just go. This movie gear shifts between genre tones in a way that is like that you don't feel the shifting happening i mean right it's it, very this, should be, smooth. this should be studied sure. yeah sure. oh i think so as, this is masterful writing right yeah as a writer I'm, well this is why it's one of the, the you know top 500 movies ever made i'm sure you know mm-hmm. i mean it is uh the screenplay may have simplicity to it as far as like you know i mean now watching it knowing where it's going it's like okay well i know they're setting you know the, the thing with the code up in the first scene why else does that scene exist you know, they're sending up this thing with the, the, the computer code. Uh, but at the time, I didn't... Setting up the ditto of it all? Yeah, yeah. All of these things are set up, and they kind of... But they shift between genre. It shifts easily between uh, romance or a romance movie, a drama, then it's a thriller, then it's a comedy, then it's a thriller again, then it's a romance again. Then it's a thriller again. I mean, it just like, you know, and you don't even feel it. It's a, a no, master it class. Never feels, of, uh, right. It never feels off. It never feels like uh, like they're trying to force. Or, uh, oh, we have to have a romantic angle in here. Let's push it in. Nothing feels forced about what they're trying to do. I think of, I think a big part of that is I actually think that Demi Moore and Patrick Swayze have a lot of good chemistry on screen yeah. together. I feel like if they didn't have that, it this movie would not work. 
I think everyone in this movie has really great chemistry, and that's why it works. Yeah. For Everyone's sure. really working well off each other. I think Demi Moore's killing it. Yeah. Were there, okay, for, so for me, there was several moments in this movie that I was watching it, and I was like, how was, like, this was nominated for Academy Awards and won Academy Awards. Like, nowadays, if this movie came out, I don't think that would be the case at all. No, not at all. Yeah. I, would, I was trying to think about something similar, and I think the closest thing we have is The Shape of Water, but that's a very artistic movie in a way that this movie isn't like, yeah. not that it's not an artful movie, but that movie is like very highbrow. And this is very, this movie feels really grounded and really believable. And that, whereas like that movie is like fantastical, but that's yeah. the closest I could think of something recent that would be like this. Well, remind me really quick, uh, what was this movie? So it was nominated for several Academy Awards and it won several Academy Awards, I believe, right? Well, it was nominated it for five and it won two. Okay, so yeah. what did what was it nominated for? That Be- it, didn't it was win? nominated for Best Picture, I think screenplay. Best Actress, Screenplay, Best mm-hmm. Supporting Actress, and I think Best Actor might have been the fifth one. Really? Um, what won was Best Screenplay and then Whoopi won for Best Supporting. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I mean, Whoopi Goldberg in this movie, uh, you know, it's like I see my impression was at that time that you got to forgive me. I can't remember the year, but Marissa Tomei won a best supporting actress for my cousin Vinny, if you remember. Mm -hmm. And there was a lot of my, you know, whenever I'd watch the Academy Awards, it always seemed like best actor, best actress were like these people were actors right this is your daniel day lewis moment or whatever and best supporting actor best supporting actress were more like um the way i read it i don't know if this is true but it's like these are they're scene stealing roles like these are good roles like they're well-written roles and they're acted as best as you can you know perform those roles they they when whoopi goldberg is in the movie she dominates the movie. It becomes a Whoopi Goldberg comedy. Is that fair to say? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. her scenes, absolutely. Oh, yeah, yeah. So she, it's like, the, but it's like, it's a combination of the personality and it's a combination of the writing. You know, it's like, that's where I've always been kind of like iffy on the supporting actor bit. It's like, well, I mean, is it the best acting of the year? But it's the, it's the role plus personality. It's like that role in that movie dominates the movie when that person i mean it's heath ledger in in the joker well i don't know i mean maybe yeah they still do that to this day yeah for sure that is what supporting actor is you got to have a really fucking good role (laughs) and the perfect person to match with it christoph waltz has won two (laughs) supporting actor academy awards for tarantino Uh, movies waltz and uh, sam rockwell that is yeah Yeah. they are both perfect examples And Sean, it's funny that you say Christoph Waltz because, like, I I'm one of the only like five people in the world that watched Tim Burton's Big Eyes, and That's he right. was great in that. And I think he might have gotten like a Golden Globe nomination, but never got like the Oscar nom. But he was like a scenery chewing villain in that movie, and I was like, this is what he does. Why are we not recognizing it again? Yeah, but it was funny when you put him in movies like because um, he was the, wasn't he Green Hornet. Yes. You know, it, the yeah. role is I not good. I forgot that movie existed. But that's the thing. It's a, the role itself is not strong enough, even if you have a strong actor in there. And then I know that Christoph Waltz was also in the Terry Gilliam movie, Zero Theorem, yeah. where he was like the main guy. And like, I didn't see it. Did any of you see it? I mean, this is a no. 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 And everyone thought that was going to get him his Oscar, his uh, actor Oscar at yeah. the time. It was like big buzz the, for it. You remember the Burger King tie in with Green Hornet? No. No. Yeah, Burger I mean, King uh, had like a Green Hornet like meal or something, and they had like merch and shit. That was they like have a Green Burger. Like you remember in the nineties how we used to do shit? We're trying to do that again, and then everyone's like, "We're not going to go see a Seth Rogen superhero movie." So no, uh-huh. <laughs> ahead of its time. <laughs> I, like I feel like that got deleted from everyone's memory. Probably, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, yeah. all these things are ephemeral. But I mean, I guess, okay, so just really quick, going back, I mean, if we can go around the room, I, I'm curious when you first saw this movie, because tonight, 
uh, you know, when we, again, we're this is the COVID era, so we're apart. We're when we're recording this and when we're watching, and so basically, we try to. Oh, I miss you, know, you guys. We have a yeah. I know. Oh. I haven't seen you in. I know. Like it's almost uh, what six months or something like that. Uh, yeah, in person. it's getting hard. Um, but <laughs> we we have a. <laughs> We have a chat, uh, you know, we go on uh, on a chat and we're talking during the movie. And uh, and what I got from this is like, wow, you guys really had a, a, a nostalgic experience tie in here. So I'm just kind of curious, like formative, how you saw it, what the circumstances was of what it meant to you. I'm just looking on my box here. So I'm going to go over to Holly over here. Holly, where, how did you first come to Ghost? Uh, well, Ghost came out in 1990, so I was in kindergarten. Um, I, was say, I was four. <laughs> but uh, so I didn't see it in the theater, but I was one of the houses that had the illegal cable box and I had pay per view <laughs> for free. You remember those so days? I watched it on pay per view in 1990 when it came out. And um, I, I, I mean, I'm, you know, five years old, I should not have been watching that movie, but I watched it all the fucking time. You watched it at five years old? Oh yeah, my, my favorite was like movie, seven or eight. My favorite movie at four years old was Caddyshack. Like I watched whatever the fuck I wanted. Yeah. Wow. Okay, so how did it affect you as a, a four-year-old Holly? What happened? Um. There? Yeah, four-year-old Holly. Uh, some things went over my head, and some things terrified me. The shadow ghost definitely terrified me. The angel in the bed scene when he's like dying and having his like freak out like hallucination whatever that was like when he looks over and sees the angel statue laying in the bed that imagery was horrifying horrifying to me i don't know why but it was horrifying like it was so scary to me i think that was more scary to me than the shadow ghost for some reason i don't know why that imagery was just like haunting um and then obviously the end when carl gets impaled by the window that was like the bloodiest thing i had seen so far in my life so i was just you know haunted by shattered glass for the rest of my life um yeah just death that way right when you when when you hear the rolling stones sing shatter do you like freak out do you have uh, panic attacks and shit i'm triggered no like we were we were laughing during our chat i was like oh my god this movie made me think that ghosts were cool it made me think that you know psychics were cool and i was like I honestly think this movie like shaped me a little bit. I, mean, I, was, I was joking. But, like, I think it really did. Uh, <laughs> so also when I was like five years old, Patrick Swayze was my favorite actor because I loved jury dancing and I love ghost and I called him Patrick Swayze way. So like, it was like a known thing in my house, like little four-year-old Holly loved Patrick Swayze way, which yeah, I don't know. I was a weird kid. But that's my experience with ghosts why it's nostalgic well um i guess so you you mentioned a couple of things but um the uh the shadow ghosts okay so um sure. uh, I, i'm sure you've seen this movie several times in your life between yeah. you know five and now um yeah. has that Still experience scary. are they that's i guess the question it's like you well, know you watch it now it's the sound more than anything. Yeah, it's 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 not scary to me anymore, but I remember the feeling of being scared as a kid watching that. That's the thing. It's the memory. It's like sensory. It's memory sensory. It's like I don't. I'm not scared because of it, but I'm I'm triggered by it, yeah. and I remember that feeling of being scared. Did you guys read what the sounds were? No, no. like baby screaming it's, reversed. Yeah, it's baby screaming in reverse. Really? <laughs> Which makes it worse. <laughs> more terrifying. Yeah. Like how can we how can we make this sound? How about the sounds of screaming children? You know what? We can work with that. Yeah. We can do that. Well, so this movie has been like a part of my life since I was before I was a conscious like person because so I was born about a month before this movie came out. This movie's turning 30 this year. And so am I. So this movie (laughs) came out mid July. I was born like mid June. And um, so I was actually, my parents, when I was born, my parents were planning to go see Dick Tracy in theaters. And then my mom went into labor with me. And so she didn't get to see Dick Tracy because she went to labor with me. So one of the first things they saw once they could get out of the house and leave me behind was ghost. And so 
then when I was like seven or eight years old, they showed it to me for the first time and they have great memories of it because it was the first time they got to get away from me. <laughs> and they had the light gray ghost VHS version of it. Oh yeah. yeah. And so they loved it and they would always show it to me as a kid and just be like, this is like, this is true love. This is how relationships work. If you really care about someone, you'll do anything to protect them. And like, so this is a really formative movie for that. But yeah, like I, Holly, I'm with you. Like a lot of things went over my head with it. And, but I definitely think this is where my fear of like home invasion comes from. My fear of being mugged or just like assaulted comes from. So is there, because that scene comes out of nowhere in this movie. It's true. So is there a message like true love is not crossing over till you avenge your lover? <laughs> Or, like, just prevent them from being murdered. Right, yeah. <laughs> See, it's weird that you're saying, I know, Sean, we're going to get to you, too. But, like, I, I, and I don't remember, and well, this is maybe a conversation for another night. But to me, at 16, I saw Ghost in 1990, but the, and, and the one that, the movie that did a similar thing that I really connected to was the crow in 1994 came along four years later I can which see that. it was the, that was the true love movie avenging the you know the, her death after the like that yeah, was i sure. guess that was more you know where i i went with that um, <laughs> because of colin's right, darker but, soul well, i was you know yeah, this find a darker like, movie <laughs> I was not a but uniform like, goth in 1994 sorry what Kit Michaela, what'd you say I was saying like, yeah, but my, like my parents were parents and this is more like the parents version of the crow. Right. Yeah, that's true. Mm. You know, <laughs> put that on the poster, <laughs> the parents version of the crow. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. We're waking up t-shirts no, right it's here. Funny. It's funny to me though, because watching it, like the movie that I thought of, I was like, this is the same premise in the beginning of weekend at Bernie. <laughs> is it? There's a there's a whole bank thing and they gotta find money and yeah. The guys like discover that Bernie is committing fraud, so he like tries to have them killed. I'm like, it's the same. <laughs> yep. Uh, well, Sean, where did you uh, where did you first come around to Ghost? Um, it's a little similar to Holly's. Um, this had to be my mom's favorite movie at the time um, because I remember watching it in the presence of her. Like the reason I was watching it is because she had put it on. Um, so I had to have watched this thing when I was like five years old, like Holly said, because this had to be a, a, a rental for them. So I saw it around five years old. Um, do you guys ever realize that the way you say certain things in your life now is just mimicking old movies you oh, saw? Yeah. Yep. Oh, sure. Certain ways, day of my life. So yeah. much of this movie, like the way I say certain phrases, some, it comes from this movie. Yeah, you like that stuff girl. is stuck. What you in danger, girl? Ah, uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like, well, yeah. I think we all so, have that, right? And it's always like I, you're I, waiting I for the so. the person who goes like, "Oh, that's from Ghost," or "That's from yeah, whatever." Yeah. Like, yeah. And then you're like, "Oh shit, I got a secret code with this person who like, understands yeah. where it's that right. comes yeah. from." It's, it's great when you can happens. say a phrase without context, and like somebody gets it. They're like, "I know what that's yeah. from." Yeah, That's then, the you, then you get ever. old and you do that shit all the time and nobody knows what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. And that's when you make a podcast <laughs> with people who understand what you're talking about. Um, well, don't so, worry. Sean yeah. Rogers about to give away a big Saturday Night Freak Show thing here later on. But okay, yeah. Oh. <laughs> so uh, so this is a, you're saying, so basically you're all saying this is a very formative uh, experience. I mean. Yeah, I was just a little tiny amoeba when I first saw this and it, it like it's filled in like I absorbed so much shit from this movie. Yeah, how do you not? How do you not yeah. just soak it up like a sponge when you're a kid? You know, like yeah. like I can, like Sean, have you shown your kids this movie? No, not yet. Well, you're slacking. You need to get out. It's, of time. <laughs> it's time. But is it too intense? I mean, you're saying that you saw it so and it scared it the shit out of you about shadows and people being impaled on pieces of glass and you know all this stuff. I mean, homicide. Yeah, yeah, home invasion and all. I mean, like you've got uh, like phobias, money laundering. That Scariest thing ever. <laughs> I'm still Haunted afraid of computers laundering money. <laughs> yeah, I want to know who this uh, Mr. Balustrade, what's his name? You guys know yeah. better than me, probably. What's it? Come on. Balustrade. Balustrade. Yeah. Right. Balustrade. The white collar uh, drug dealer who orchestrates this whole thing, or at least that uh, Tony Goldwyn is uh, indebted to. Tony Gold Goldwyn, of course, 
is uh well he's not he's on wonderful. the saturday night freak show wall of fame but we will always remember him from his first movie role in the classic 1986 movie that's right it's friday the 13th part six jason lives oh yeah that's right <laughs> where he gets I forgot he was in that impaled right. by he gets, a, in the, he gets in the crotch yeah no he gets in the it stomach costs. and jason <laughs> flips him over his head when the yeah he's driving a vw uh, beetle which I'll is why but you know whatever he's made a career out of being a white collar scumbag in he films has, such as few, like that's uh, his thing he played he's played creepy guys in um Kiss the Girls. Yeah. He was one of the killers in Kiss the Girls. Scandal. Um, that was scandal. six seasons of him being a <laughs> shitty president. Right. Wasn't he Don't also go experiment? He was a white collar asshole. Yeah. Because right. that's who you think he was of. He's pretty as... great in cuffs, though. He was. Oh, Jesus. Oh, yeah. Cuffs. How do we forget? How did, cuffs? How did Sean a... forget cuffs? Oh, my God. He's, He's a... great in cuffs. He's digging up he the past. The coffee and he falls asleep. Well, you guys know he was the voice of Tarzan. In, oh yeah, yeah, in the Disney Tarzan. Yeah, the Disney cartoon Tarzan. That well, was his like return to the spotlight. He's also, and uh, Michaela probably knows this one because of his stint on Dexter. Yes, he's in an episode or several episodes of Dexter as a shady psychiatrist. But Tony as Goldwyn, white collar asshole. Yeah. <laughs> but he has become a director, and he directs like a lot of HBO shows. And I mean, that's I think primarily what he's doing now he directed a bunch of dexter episodes multiple seasons and uh i um i apologize i don't know the rest of his work but i mean that's what he's doing he's become a director i think belco experiment is like the most recent thing i've seen him in could be he's in uh lovecraft country well, yeah, not yet is he really i haven't seen I him yet oh you haven't seen him yet oh no and he's upcoming yeah, upcoming okay well that wouldn't surprise me because he's hbo family at this point right and maybe that's where all where he's getting his employment is at hbo i think he's great though i would love I to see him in more stuff well the you, other- just, you just know you just know he's the nicest guy in real life that's probably like, yeah also. i mean he gives off that yeah. vibe you know, but he he's also one of those people like I'm like he plays a scumbag, but I bet he's really nice in real life. But he's really good in this in the scenes where like he is coming to Demi Moore's character, and he he knows you know that something's going on that you know he's got a he's really uh, upset about you know he's got to get this four million dollars back, and I mean he's very. Um, what, it's not it's like a combination of guilt and fear and uh yes. yeah very on the edge everybody's very on the edge patrick swayze the star of this movie um okay. i remember a uh the review from uh roger ebert at the time roger ebert may he rest in peace he shit all over this movie but Holy he shaped shit. my oh. opinion of two and, and a half stars yeah and he said patrick swayze runs the gamut of emotion in this movie and i always thought that but i can't remember if i thought that before i read roger ebert or roger ebert put it in my mind but it's like is patrick swayze doing a good uh performance or is this like an exaggerated facial because he's afraid and he looks he's angry and he looks all mean he's in love so he looks you know it's like it's like patrick swayze is one of those uh actor school guys where you go like give me fear Give me love. Give me uh, terror. Yeah. Give I'm me gonna, happiness. I'm going to say, I'm gonna say he's overdoing it a bit. And of all of the performances, his is the weakest. Yeah, he is. See, but uh, here's the thing. He's, he's not big, acting against works. anyone. That's it. Yeah, that's exactly it. He has to act by himself all the time and yeah. pretend like no one can see him. That's why he's overdoing it. Yeah, very true. Who's- yeah, I think this is like one of his best performances. I know it's a little much, but it's because he's he's in a position where no one can see him, you know? And yeah. like, honestly, like I was thinking about the movie from his perspective when we were watching it tonight and he is in hell. This has got to be the worst thing you could ever experience as a human being. Like well, yeah, that seeing is your loved ones grieve your death and you cannot do anything about it. That sounds yeah. awful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, this is sure. the appeal of the movie, right? That uh, <laughs> Yeah. You can't do anything about it. You can be there and witness it. This is kind of, this has been taken to, um, uh, you know, like it, because this is a metaphysical thing that we're talking about. Have you guys seen the movie A Ghost Story 
with uh, yes. Casey Affleck and yeah, uh, Rooney I Mara. Didn't care for that movie. But that that was kind of like that was Ghost on like this kind of metaphysical, like very serious, you know, out of time experience. Which I don't know. Right. I really, I really, I like that movie to a point. Mm-hmm. But it was uh, because I guess the it's idea a good concept. The idea that there's eventually going to be this light coming down from, you know, heaven and that the good people get rewarded um, is kind of is hopeful, you know, in a way that it's like uh, because it seems arbitrary. Well, maybe it isn't bad people who murder people. Shadow ghosts come and grab them and pull them off into the shadows and they disappear. It's very creepy. They scream like backwards babies. Uh, (laughs) Good people. The light comes down. And takes them away to heaven. Um, as we've gone on in, in time now, and we've become a more atheistic culture, I think, then a ghost story is the yawn of the abyss, right? And time is that abyss where you just kind of like, well, here I am yeah. hanging out in this place for forever. <laughs> yeah, a, a ghost a ghost story is what happens when there's not a murder plot in the, in, the, in your life at that point. Yeah. But Less it's, entertaining. It's really uncomfortable to watch though just knowing how Casey Affleck is as a person though. Like yeah, it's it has, really it's uncomfortable to watch yeah, knowing but, he's an asshole. Yeah. But sometimes I mean for movies I I always try to at least like divorce, you know, like the person from the the part. I mean, you kind of have to look at the maybe I don't know, it's to Yeah, each but own, there was you know? like stuff that came out that happened on the set of that movie and that's hard to separate that. There's another one. Well, I was going to say, well, no, it's from the opposite perspective. It's kind of to me a companion piece to a ghost story is a personal shopper with uh Kristen Stewart. Oh, have you I seen that one? Yet. That's a great movie. They both have a, t- a a tonal similarity, but they're on opposite sides. Casey Affleck is the ghost. You know, it's from the ghost perspective in a ghost story. Uh, personal shopper right. is the person who's been left behind. That's the Demi Moore story. Personal shopper has one of the most intense. Don't like, say too much. Don't say too much. You should watch. It. You I should watch you that like movie. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, personal shopper is great. I was the reason why it's on Criterion. Yeah. yeah. Um, other people in this movie, obviously we're going to go with, uh, Demi Moore. Personally, I think Demi Moore gives the best actor performance in the movie because she has the, she carries the dramatic weight of the film. Uh, you know, in, in her movie, it's a completely serious thing. Um, she has to react like all of this is actually a- absolutely real. Um, Sean question though, short haired Demi Moore, long haired Demi Moore. I like short haired Demi Moore. All right, I'm going to go long haired wor- Demi Moore. It works for me in this movie. I like her either way. I don't way, think it's the I, best I, look, but she's flawless either way. You know, yeah, she's. I think she's look, great in this movie. Question: Why doesn't Michaela get that question? <laughs> uh, well, you get uh, 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 Roadhouse Patrick Swayze or Ghost Patrick. No, I don't know. What's a oh, fair Ghost question. Patrick Swayze. Okay. Ghost, hands down. <laughs> yeah. Um, the sex scene or, in this movie was way better than Roadhouse. There were a lot of abs in this movie. And I agree with Michaela. Demi Moore looks flawless no matter what. But unfortunately, that haircut spawned a lot of people getting that haircut that really could pull off. Exactly. That's exactly the problem. Like, people see it and they're like, I can do that. And it's like, no, No, you're not Demi Moore. So, no, you can't. Yeah, this is. Because she carried that. No, you. Well, she used to have like this luxurious long hair. I don't. Maybe yes. this is a personal thing. I think she still does. She yeah, does she because does. in Charlie's well, Angels, I remember when she's like fifty or something in a bikini. It was like holy fuck. But this was like in the indecent gorgeous. proposal uh, era, right? And she went to indecent proposal right after this or whatever. And mm. yeah, because this was like her first like leading lady role where she really proved yeah. that she could carry a movie. Yeah. Was it okay? You might be right. I uh, she was yeah, Saint Elmo's Fire, and uh, that was early eighty. What the fuck did she do in between? And that? blame it on Rio. What's yeah. wasn't last there a, night? And uh, wasn't there a up. devil movie where she's pregnant with like the devil? Yeah, the kid seventh or something sign. Like that? Yeah, first, uh, that's, that's first movie here, I ever Demi saw her in was first movie I ever saw her in was in the eighties. Was one crazy summer. Right, right, yeah. I think Which actually, actually says, yeah. like yeah, this is like a big budget. You know, you're going to lead this movie. And this She's bankable her, after this movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah because exactly. um, this made her. I think like this gave her that you know that career boost and the wind in your sails. 
that took her on to movies like Strip Tease. And Nothing But Trouble was right after this. Oh, shit. Ooh. That's, oh, I that's also about short-haired that. Demi Moore. It is. Know Maybe that's why he's not like short hair. He's yeah. like, it reminds me too much of Nothing But Trouble. I can't do it. <laughs> I will say I do love the detail of her wearing his shirts a lot. Yeah. This movie. That is like something when you are grieving a person, you do things like that. And I love that detail. You know, Colin, you were saying that her performance is the strongest. Like, I really believe that she's a grieving widow in this movie. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel her agony in this movie, Mm -hmm. for sure. Oh, yeah. 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 Great job. It's almost hard to watch sometimes, Mm -hmm. you know? Right. Her being in that big, crazy, empty apartment by herself, you're just like, and like, Okay, so she's an artist, and, like, he was, like, an investment banker. So you also are kind of in the back of your mind, like, she has no income anymore. Yeah. Like, I, because yeah, she's not pulling it in being an artist. Like, well, yeah, my, my, um, my brother stopped over while I was watching this, and he was like, so she's got to move now, right? And I was like, <laughs> oh, well, I mean, she might have had insurance on, I know they weren't married, but she could have had an insurance policy. And, you know, like, if she's a successful artist in New York City, she might be making a lot of money. Maybe. At, at this time, yeah. Yeah, it's possible, because if you're a professional artist and you're successful in a big city like that, you can pull in a lot of money, but I don't know how much money pottery brings in. I don't know. It's not a market that I'm but into. The art community is so volatile that like you could be yeah. hot one day and then you're not the next, you right, know? Right, exactly. Whereas like she was definitely relying on his investment banking to like that apartment is gigantic. Huge. Man, in New that York apartment is huge. In yeah. New York. Yeah. <laughs> how I wonder how much they're paying for huge. that thing. And and well, it's gotta be millions. What, what of they, dollars, and wait, right? they bought it, right? They yeah, had to have yeah, bought it. They were renovating it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They renovated it for sure, so they had to have bought it. Like, like it's... when I've been to New York and stayed in hotel rooms, my hotel rooms have been like 300 square feet. Yeah. Like, they've been yeah. so tiny that you open the door and it hits the other wall. Right. Like, yeah. in a hotel. Like, right. it's a barely big enough for a bed, you know? And so, like, yeah. the big, the big loft, these crazy staircase and, like, Big enough that she can have like a pottery studio in their apartment. Yeah. I was I was trying to think about. It. I'm like, no, I don't know much about real estate. I really don't know much about New York real estate, and I don't know much about money in the '90s. Okay, However, so I have to ask, what do you know about New York real estate? <laughs> a little bit. So, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I was thinking, I was like, okay, so they bought that place, and they bought it when it was like in desperate need of renovation. I'm thinking at best they still spent maybe three quarters of a million dollars at, at the, the cheapest, yeah, right? Well, so That's she can flip that place and be fine. If she flips it, she'll so be big bank. Yeah. There used to be a saying in like the '90s in New York that you could put a hundred dollar bill on the ground and you couldn't buy the space the hundred dollar bill covered with it. Right. Exactly. <sighs> You know? I, I, so, I love how this has turned into um, uh, like the island, the, the island talk from Scream 4. <laughs> <laughs> Except a whole episode. Well, you have like the, the real New York apartment is probably, well, I don't even know. I was going to say like Rosemary's Baby or something like that. It seems like. And then you've got other things like the devil's advocate, right? You, you know, when everybody yeah. moves into a, a new like big ass. Well, he's a lawyer. Right. So that's yeah, the, what yeah. a lawyer. No, gets. no, most comparable, most comparable movie is the apartment and three men and a baby. <laughs> yes. Cause that's huge. I'll give you that. They paint a mural on the wall. And he was an oh, architect. In that movie. Was, yeah. There was an architect and a professional actor and a professional cartoonist. And they had to share an apartment that was that big. Yeah. Cause that's why I was wondering about the mural. Are, are, found it. Are you pitching me three men and a baby right now? Yes, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what I was wondering about. Colin, it's funny you mentioned that. Has that been done? No. <laughs> no, it has not. Now my list. I know the goots. Okay. I know the goots. The goots and the and the and the tooches. That's right. <laughs> well, I mean, our next our next major character here. Well, did we talk about Whoopi Goldberg already? And right. uh, so we were we were talking about real estate. I was like, that brings in Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> yeah. So, ah. so she's a fortune teller. She's, you know, she's renting that space for her, for her, um, sister. I don't know what the fuck you call it. Her studio, her, oh, her yeah. office, what her, do you call it? I don't know. Her salon. 
her room. <laughs> her business. So she's running she's running that space for her business. So you know that's gonna cost money. How much is she making as a fucking fortune teller? Well, she's there with her two sisters, correct? I mean they're, they're yeah, related. They work, yeah. But they work with her. So they're paying rent and they're yeah. paying for rent for the studio. Yeah. So I'm like, how much are they making telling fortunes? It's Not crazy. Just a lot. Twenty dollars at a time. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's why they're living in that. Uh, they, I mean, because I think the studio is where they live. Yeah. Do they live upstairs? Is yeah, that it? I think so. Yeah, that's what it feels okay. like. Because she says it's her neighborhood where uh, Willie Lopez comes from. That's an actor. I'm sure, sorry I didn't look up the actual killer in the movie, the guy who murders Sam Wheat. Sam Wheat. Sam Wheat, Wheat the whitest name in the world. Right? My Wheat. husband said, what, was Johnny Barley taken? <laughs> <laughs> he couldn't get Johnny over the Sam Barley. Wheat of it all. He couldn't. <laughs> Hi, I'm I, Bill I, Rye. I, <laughs> Bill what? Bill Rye? To- <laughs> What'd you say, Holly? Bill Rye. Yeah. Bill, Rye. Bill, Bill Rye. Bill Rye. Yeah. Um, How are you doing? Right. Is there? I, are we supposed I, to be reading Toby. something into that? Uh, Sam Wheat. I mean, just just whiteness. I think it's, it's like whiteness. how white. Can, yeah. How white of a name can we get? Yeah. Because it's, it's like, like a white, white, white movie. We couldn't name him Sam White Bread, so we went with Wheat. <laughs> yeah. We can't. No. We can't do Sam White. Wheat. All right. Fine. Perfect. <laughs> and Rye is too dark. So. Right. <laughs> I can't be I can just, Rye, that's I, I can just imagine Toby being incredulous at the name and just saying that, like Sam Wheat. Like that's <laughs> yeah, all that's they can exactly do. What happened. That is exactly what happened. But then he was so charmed by the Swayze of it all that he kind of forgot it. You okay. gotta be. You, know? you gotta be. But that brings me to my my one of my favorite parts of this movie. One of my favorite jokes is when she's like. Are you a white guy? And her sister's like, a white guy, we gotta call the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> and then when we're on the phone with the doctor, they go, Yeah, she's talking to white people in the room. <laughs> doctor, there ain't no white people here. <laughs> Holly, when they go to the bank, when 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 Sam Wheat and Oda Mae Brown go to the bank to pull the Rita Miller scheme, okay, that bank is definitely the bank from It's Always Sunny in the gas crisis episode, right? Hands down. I was also wondering is if it's the, the same bank. Is it the bank from the mask too? Yeah, I think maybe. so. <laughs> I think it is. I was like, that I've seen be. this bank. It's like Hollywood's bank. Right, I've seen this bank. Because <laughs> Toby was like, this bank looks really familiar. And I was like, yeah, I'm pretty I sure it's from right. the It's Always Sunny gas crisis episode. Yeah. I think you're right. It's like Banks, any, any real estate. Any movie, where, any movie where someone has to go to a big city bank for a loan, it's in that bank. <laughs> Well, let's talk for a minute. Um, well, I mean, Whoopi Goldberg, obviously. I mean, we, we know she's an American icon. She's been, uh, you know, well, because what was it? Robin she's Williams. She's an EGOT. Well, what? She's an EGOT, yeah. She's an EGOT. Help she me out. An, I'm not a millennial. What? Oh, you don't know what an Emmy? EGOT is? Fuck EGOT, no. EGOT is not a millennial thing. It's a 30 Rock thing. Okay. No. Yeah. I'm Emmy, old. Golden Globe, Emmy, Oscar, Golden Tony. Golden Globe, Oscar, and Tony. What you yeah. won the Tony for? Um, Sister Acts? Adaptation, was it? maybe? Okay. I was like, it's, it's either the Sister Act adaptation or the Color Purple adaptation. I was going to say the Color Purple, yeah. yeah. It's one of the two. I don't know. Okay. If I'm wrong, but I this apologize. Was, I apologize. I'm pretty sure this was her first like letter in the EGOT, though, because she got the Oscar for this. I think okay. so. Okay. Because I remember. Well, she won it as a producer. For ah. this? No, oh, not for this. The, she won a Tony the, Award. The Sister Act. What? Um, play producer of a Broadway musical, thoroughly modern Millie. In oh shit! Oh, oh wow. nice. Okay, okay. That's awesome. Yeah. Isn't actually Tracy Morgan like really close to an EGOT, which is like the plot from Thirty Rock of him trying to get an EGOT? I it might be. Is he? I feel like he's two away. <laughs> I feel like he needs the Tony, and that might be the only thing he's missing. Tracy Wait, Morgan has an Oscar. Oscar. He doesn't yeah, have an Oscar. So he's two away. Yeah. He definitely has an Emmy for Thirty Rock, though. He does, yes, and he has. A, I think he has a Golden Globe for Thirty Rock too. Yeah, so he, yeah. yeah, he's halfway there. Yeah. So the two hardest ones, he's still got to. Yeah, but it's funny <laughs> though, because that was his storyline on Thirty Rock. Yeah. So it's funny that he's halfway there from Thirty, a, Rock, is, 30 Rock is brilliant. Anyone it's remember so when they tried to make uh, Whoopi Goldberg into an action movie hero in the Joel Silver produced Jumpin' Jack Flash? Oh, no. I thought you were going to say Theodore Rex. I was going to say, I'm sticking with Theodore Rex. <laughs> no, that was, that was on the, yeah, when she he was still coming up. He wears shoes that fit around his three dinosaur toes. <laughs> Come on. I know, right? 
What was I the other? Like Theodore Fatal Rex Beauty. Would be a double feature with Tammy and the T Rex. Oh my! I wouldn't be able to handle it. I don't think. Was Fatal Beauty <laughs> the, the one explode? with uh, uh, Sam Elliott? It was uh, Whoopi Goldberg and Sam Elliott. Fatal Beauty, and then they're like, you know what? She's probably more suited to things like Sister Act and Ghost. Yeah, I just, and I just Eddie. never was it Eddie. And- I, just, Eddie. I just never got over her being with Ted Danson. Yeah, I never got over. Were they that. in a, a Were they in a movie together? It seems like they Jungle were. Fever? Yeah, it was. No, um, not no. That was Wesley Snipes and Annabella Sciorra. It was okay. um, uh, not made in America. Um, something like that. Okay. Fucking hell! All right, sorry. Comedy, comedy is not my strong point. It'll come Wait, back you know. to you. But isn't it weird to kind of see Whoopi without the dreads, though? Well, not yeah, to me, because this, the, this is the whoopee I remember. So long. Right, yeah. And now she's Mother Abigail in the new stand that's coming to CBS All Access this oh, fall, yeah. listener. Um, okay, well, we got to move along here as our time is whittling away from us. The next uh, major player in the movie is Vincent Schiavelli. Um, he's an actor who uh, was born with, uh, what was it called, Marfam Syndrome. He plays the subway ghost. Um, oh yeah, he plays the spirit, the spirit of New York. Basically, and he, he's the Mr. Guy. Miyagi for Sam Wheat. Yeah, he Dang, teaches him how because this is the basically the thing in the movie, right? Is uh, how do you, as a ghost, interact with your uh, surround? Because there's a couple of plot points. It's like you got to learn how to, as a ghost, you got to learn how to interact with your surroundings. So you know, first of all, obviously you can talk to cats because cats are half here and half cats there. Cats can see you. That's right. If Constantine taught us anything, they're half in and Which, half out. Well, my husband understands that now because, like, whenever the cats are staring at like a corner in the room and being weird, it's I'm ghost. like, oh, well, they see a ghost. And like, he never got what I meant by that until now because I'm like, oh, according to that, because of ghosts, they can see whatever's happening. Constantine you know? next. Just Show him Constantine. Like, those are out. the rules, Toby. Yeah. yeah. You can smash windows if you try hard enough. For real though, I, in my my house that I grew up in, my dog did that shit. He was the most docile dog in the world, and all of a sudden he would just like growl and bark at something in the middle of the fucking room when there was nothing there. That's like, I have a lot of stories about that house, but that was like one of the things I'm like, okay, something is fucking up. They really do that. It's insane. And I was right. It was made in America, by the way. Made in America. Yeah. Okay. All right. Made in America. All right. Well, That's here's really important to the plot of Ghost. Honestly, they really are. They really are. They really are. Okay. Here's uh, part of the, 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 the logical traps that uh, a 16-year-old Colin had problems with with this movie, right? Okay. Because in order for Ghost to uh, interact with a solid object, he has to use his mind because... Oh, I've got an answer for this. I've got an answer for this. Because he is not a physical out. being anymore, right? Because obviously you're... The idea is that basically what you're seeing is the construct of Sam Wheat, not actually Sam Wheat. Is it his soul? We don't know. Yes. But here's my question, Sean. I know where you're going. You're like, well, how is he able to do this? Maybe. My question is, how come he doesn't fall through the floor? It's, it's um, It's like breathing. Your mind just does it for you. Like you're not thinking about it, but you're breathing. That's, I think that's kind of their thing. This but, is and, and, and no basis for anything. This is just what seems right to me. Yeah, but he's yeah, like you don't think about breathing or your heart beating or blinking or things like that, you know. So it's just right. I accept the reality that my feet are on the floor. I'm not falling through the earth to the center of the core of the earth or going out in China or ending up no, somewhere out in space. You, you could so end up so in the natural. Can we do this movie again? But two seconds after he gets shot, his ghost just falls to the center of the earth. Yeah. And he's just stuck in lava for the rest of his life. No, because I love the way that scene is edited. I love the way that he ch- takes off after the guy that mugs him. And you think yeah. he lives. You think it's right. Demi Moore that got shot. And then you come back and she's holding him. Yeah. That, 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 I honestly think most of my mental health issues are I can trace back to that exact scene. So you're saying it's you so haven't well actually had these experiences that bother you. Are they from movies? Well, yeah. Yeah, I think that, like, because I was so not expecting that the first time I watched this movie. Like, I, this movie starts off being so romantic and so, like, our, like, she even says, you live a charmed life. And I'm just, and then it all just comes crumbling down in an instant. And, like, yeah. when you're a kid, you don't know that that's a possibility. 
Yeah. Not to, not to mention like when you're a kid, I mean, most, most people are taught like the basics, the basic concepts of heaven and hell when you're a child, most people learn that pretty early. And in this movie, you see it happening. You see like, okay, if you're a shitty person, you're going to get drugged to hell. If you're a good person, you're going to go up to the light. Like you see that actual physical example of that happening. And it's a terrifying concept to a child. You're like, oh my God, I have to live my life in a really specific way or I'm going to like be shit to hell. Like it's going to be terrifying. Oh shit. This like, is, this is amazing to me. How this is what? a, this is a, this is an amazing psychological insight into. So basically in the absence, maybe of like uh, uh religion ghost kind of, if you introduce it to a child young enough, will provide that kind of uh, yeah. metaphysical Absolutely. fear. Yes, uh, I know, did not go stay to stay on the yeah. right path. Otherwise, those fucking shadow right. ghosts are going to yes, come. And- right. I, this I will not, put the fear of God in you. I did not go to church for the first time until I was in middle school. And so, like, this was my <laughs> first example of that heaven and hell, like, yin and yang. Yeah. This was my first viewing of it. I was going to say, it'd be funny if you watched it and then you went up to your mom and be like, we should go to church. <laughs> I probably did, knowing me as a child. <laughs> It's like I don't want to be taken by shadow ghosts. I want those shadow ghosts. Mom. I'll bet I I'll bet I said that to my mom at some point. Like I don't want to be taken by shadow ghosts. <laughs> well, as we're wrapping this up here, and I know we haven't had a chance to talk about the pottery scene yet or the ending. I mean, is there a, we have to talk about those obviously, but um, the ending's really hard for me, honestly. Yeah, really difficult. What do we What do we think about the practicality of the effects in this movie? Compared to 30 years later. For well, 90, for being 30 years old. For 1990, I was like, you know what? Not bad. Not bad. I think it's very well done. There yeah. were, I Watching it tonight, I noticed a few moments um, in the composites when he's a ghost and going through the trains and all that stuff. Like, I can see kind of the outlines of what is him versus what is, is it, uh, his composite though? over the It's funny, though, him being, him being a ghost, it kind of works. It does. Because yeah. you're like, well, he's a spirit, so it makes right. sense, actually. So, for him yeah, so when they... Or uh, that, like, yeah. Or when they drop the opacity on him yes. a little bit, you're just like, that makes sense. It, it works. Makes sense. Yeah, he's Luckily, a ghost. It, it works within that. There were a yeah. few times I saw, I saw like, I, I wish I hadn't seen it, but when Carl gets taken away by the ghosts at the end, I saw the wire that was holding him up. Oh, no. Oh, I didn't see that. I've never I seen saw, that, and I don't want to see it. No, it's the first time I've ever seen it. I was just like, oh, shit, there's the wire. Mm-hmm. Unfortunate. Do you but, guys you know. feel like you have a different reaction to Unchained Melody because of this movie? Absolutely. Uh, to me, I, in 199, I had never heard it before. This introduced really? Unchained. Yeah. And then oh, introduced. I, I hadn't either. This was it. Yeah, this introduced that uh, song into my uh, to my memory. I just I mind. feel like that scene when when he jumps into Otome's body and you hear that needle drop and then like he reaches out to touch Demi more for like the you know because he wants he says he wants to touch her one last time. A scene that I really have a hard time. Yeah. So I never, I was never able to buy that because I was always aware of the physical reality of this. Uh, you know, uh, maybe Whoopi Goldberg. Yeah, it's like this is Whoopi Goldberg, and uh, you know, because I guess that's just the way that I see the. You know, it's like I get that you're trying to say that it's a, you know, he's experiencing it this way, but I guess I, I have a, a block. I can't, you know, have that. It's, kind it's of okay faith. that you don't believe in love, Colin. Yeah, uh, is that what it is? Uh, you know. <laughs> You know what, though? To me, it just sounds like you've never lost anyone super close to you and have never felt that longing to to have that experience. No, I have. It's just the it's the representation. Like, I still can't get past the physical reality of what has happened. But there's there's a moment there's a moment that I feel like it makes that it makes that okay. There's a moment that I never noticed before until watching it tonight when he goes to like touch her face as the hands, he, he starts to pull away and she's like, no. And you can see her. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, okay, she has accepted that that is him. She has accepted that it is no longer Whoopi Goldberg. And so I'm like, to me, that makes the barrier for me go away too. Mm-hmm. You know I, mean? and I never noticed until tonight. She's crossed I, over into belief. So good between yeah. all three of these actors, like they are committing so hard to it. Like yeah. I, I just really buy into all of it with all of them. It, they all committed. So, and like, I know this is a big budget Hollywood movie, so it's whatever, but like, 
I don't know, like maybe it's the editing is really good between these scenes that makes it feel so seamless. I yeah. said uh, uh, Walter Murch is a genius. Did he cut this? this movie. He cut this, yeah. yeah. And Morris, Morris Yar me. did the score. What do we think of the score? He's the guy who did Dr. Zhivago and Lawrence of Arabia. Yeah, I mean, the score is... This, this I score? love it. It's, it's, it's like ingrained in my soul at this point. Not there, only the yeah, score, exactly. but there, the sounds. The sound work of this movie. Him going through doors. The charge up before he can push uh, something. That, yeah, that's it not is, score. That's the, is, yeah, the, the sound design. No, no, sound. I'm, I'm just saying sounds. Yeah, that's your Walter well, Merch well yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. there, But that's all that is just like... There are times it. with score, it's like... It's borderline cheesy because it's like the like the hero yeah. music. I'm like, yeah. oh man! Like I enjoyed like, that so much more this time. Uh, it's little hero music. Yeah, I was like, it's, it's almost <laughs> cheesy, but I love it. It's like, so fun for him. So like fun. he's so da- he's so dour and and life is life, quote unquote, is so shitty at that point. That yeah, it, it's like he like feels good like getting yeah. back with his people, so they give him music for it. It like makes it makes you root for him. You're like, yeah, yeah you jumped through the door, motherfucker. <laughs> Get him, Superman. <laughs> <laughs> but even when like Willie dies with like the the car wreck, feel like fuck yeah, the bad guy's dead. But at the same time, you're like, oh, he's still dealing with the same purgatory that Sam Wheat is going to deal with, and that's yeah. All- yeah. yeah. That and and that that well, I don't know what that sound is. The sound, um, it's like the room sound just before the ghosts come, where it's just I don't know how to describe it, but it's just an eerie, like almost like a breathing noise. It's weird, but it just that always gets me. I don't know if anyone's done any like I don't know how much like background research anyone's done, but does I'm I'm going with music here. Does Patrick Swayze and Bill Medley do they have like a friendship because like their work has impacted each other so much because Bill Medley did Time of Your Life and Unchained Melody. I'm like, has, did they have like, did they have like a friendship or something? Because I feel like he's like narrated his career musically. But who wrote She's Like the Wind, damn it? Because that's the true MVP. Patrick here, Swayze did, right? He wrote it? Wrote yeah, it? he wrote it for his yeah. Wrote the song? Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. I know he sang the song. You're saying he wrote yeah, it? Yeah, he wrote it. Uh, I and didn't see, know Patrick Swayze okay. sang a song. Yeah, yeah she's, she's like the wind. She's like the wind. He, he sings it from Dirty Dancing. And it's about his wife, Lisa Niemi. Yes. Yeah, but th- that's. I don't remember the song. And that's she's the like thing the that wind. makes it. To my dreams. Hey, you don't remember this? You have no, to have a singing on you the Saturday Night Freak Show at some point. You weren't on our, no, we don't um, get sued. Oh, my God. What was the movie? Oh, uh, Steel Dawn. What was the last? Steel Dawn. You weren't on that one, right, Sean? No, I wasn't on the Steel Dawn movie. But, um,. So that I think that's what makes Go so easy to buy into is that you know Patrick Swayze has had this lifelong, beautiful romantic love story with Lisa Niemi. So like it's very easy to get that more in this movie, knowing that like he's been with the same person since he was like eighteen years old. You know? Yeah. And like and you know we were talking about you know the end of this movie in our group chat we were talking about it's. It's so much harder to watch that scene when he finally goes into the light knowing that he's actually gone. Like, I was legit starting to tear up. I was like, oh, my God, this is so, like, I'm feeling it right now. <laughs> but that's, when we were watching it, I told my husband, as soon as the scene started where he jumps into Otome's body, I was like, the rest of the movie's going to be hard for me to watch. I'm going to be yeah. honest. I was going to say, did you tell him to leave the room? I told him, I was like, just don't, uh, just. Just whatever's happening to me. Don't touch me. Like, don't touch me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's probably a good place to uh, to end our conversation on Ghost. I mean, uh, this is, a, like I said, it's a seismic event, obviously, in, uh, well, at least three of our lives. I mean, I remember it. Seism- <laughs> I'm going to say it's seismic in mind. The movie that wouldn't go away. You'll have to listen to see if we actually <laughs> recommend that you watch it. Now, having seen it with the fresh eyes of yes. 2020 adult eyes. But first of all, we're going to summon our mailman. His name's Igor. We're going to summon him so he can help us celebrate our 400th episode. Ladies Ooh, and gentlemen. Amazing. So yeah. How does Igor feel about this? Well, let's find out Igor, get your ass over here. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. 
just one clap. I'm kind of what that was. Yeah, you know, I clapped twice. You'll you'll have to excuse Igor. He's a little verklempt from ghosts. He he's a little emotional, so he doesn't have the words right now. I feel like I need for that. Honestly, I'm like I feel like I got a lot out, and I need to take a nap. Yeah, it's, Igor. Uh, um, he he wanted to dress up if you if you look at him, but he's only he can only find like old 1998 New Year's Eve glasses and a hat. Yeah. He's, well, so he's, wearing, he's, he's wearing, got a penny. He's got a penny in his hand. He's wearing he's just, one of Patrick Swayze's shirts. <laughs> and he's just throwing pennies at us. Yeah. Which means he's grieving if he's wearing a shirt. God, that's so sad. <laughs> Well, let's, let's, is, our, is, our, is our mandatory weeping widow. Well, we got to turn this around and make this a positive thing. We're celebrating 400 goddamn episodes on, this, on this episode of the Saturday Night Freak Show. Uh, we asked you what you liked about the Saturday Night Freak Show. Uh, Jason Madsack, who deserves recognition here because he's been with us for a very long time and is the time. keeper of the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame. That's right. You long-time listeners know about the Wall of Fame. One day we'll give you a picture of this. It has- wait, MF, wait, MF Mad's name is Jason? Yes. I did not know this. Oh, my God. Well, I have failed. Colin, actually, before you go into that, can I make like a like an announcement? Yes. yes. Based on our 400th episode. Are, are you pregnant with a freak show baby? <laughs> <laughs> are you an Igor expecting? Um, we have a merch store now. What? I like my I like my announcement better. She has she has I, creative babies to sell. Ah. <laughs> yeah, if you can get pregnant with our merch. <laughs> well, wait, how do we find oh. this stuff? If you go to tpublic.com slash user slash Saturday Night Freak Show, we've got five designs right now. If you guys if there's something you want on a shirt, let us know. We'll make it because we can upload as much shit as we want. Yeah, um, we're, we're, we're making design. we're making design. Do you want if you know um, Sean right now? I know you guys can't see him, but he's rocking the very beautiful love rhombus design. <laughs> There's a love rhombus T-shirt. There's <laughs> until then the basement is going dark. There's copyright tw- whatever year you want to say Saturday Night Freak Show. There's yes. five or six times that now you can get pillows, you can get magnets, you can get T-shirts, whatever, the fuck you want, whatever, whatever you want. If you want a shirt, tell us. I'll make it. You can buy it on a shirt. Right. So right Michaela, now, you can go to tpublic.com slash user slash Sarah and Free Show. Michaela's Say that one more time. Resident. She's a resident designer. She has done amazing fucking work creating stuff for us. It's so awesome. Check it out. It's so great. We might even do a giveaway. I might be generous. I'm drunk right now, so I might be generous. I might do a giveaway. You don't know. You don't know. We'll, right. we'll, it's been a labor of love, you know? You'll find out. All right. Hit us up with that address one more time. It is tpublic.com slash user slash Saturday Night Freak Show. And they'll take you right to our store, and you can see what designs we have available you want a shirt just dm us i can make it up real quick and then you can order it it's a print on demand website so once you order they will print it and then ship it to you so it might take a little while longer and oh oh michaela's dropping out oh michaela you're gone all right well we will also post this information on our uh facebook page which is Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. <laughs> We're also going to have this on Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. We'll have it via email. Well, you can email us and find out about it if you want to know. And that's at Saturday Night Freak Show Yahoo.com. And Did you steal hers? On, it's, well, she was in the middle of having a, a celebratory drink. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and we'll also have it on our Instagram, which is uh, at Saturday Night Freak Show. So. Jason Madsack, Keeper of the Wall, writes in and says, Congratulations on 400 episodes. From a blog spot in a basement to one of the fastest rising movie review podcasts in a basement, your show continues to inspire the masses to go out and watch some of the best slash worst movies ever made for human consumption. Thanks to your dedication and your passion, to do this every week, year in and year out. I can't wait to see who gets inducted into the Hall of Fame over the next 400 episodes. And remember, don't show it. Freak show it. 
Yeah. There it is. Okay. Design coming your way. That was so sweet. Oh, yeah. Well, Jason went above and beyond because he has been going as through always. our back catalog. That's right. The back catalog, as, as always. always. So, Jason has, because every once in a while, if you are a longtime listener of this show, we'll do the copyright whatever year Saturday Night Freak Show whenever we think we have the perfect movie. You can buy a shirt title. of it. Uh,. Well, I don't know if you got all of these. So Jason has compiled them all, and I'm going to read every single goddamn one of them. You remember? And this is going to oh boggle your mind. That's right. We got them all. Okay, you ready? Oh. Here we go. I'm so ready. Shut up. Okay. These are movie titles that we have copyrighted on the Saturday Night Freak Show. So if somebody else comes up with them, remember where they this. come from. I'm just going to say we don't deserve this. Okay. okay no, hold on. Hold on. Colin. Colin. Hold on one second. We're gonna. We've got a surprise coming in Jason's way. Uh, Michaela's working on it, and when it happens, we're sending you a fucking shirt, my friend. We're gonna send it to you. We're gonna get your info. Yeah. We're putting it out there. It's coming your way. Just give us a little time. Anyway, Colin, back to you. All right, here we go. So well, once watching Ghost, I don't know if I'm ready to cry again. <laughs> I know. Well, here are the movies, and you'll have to tell me if you remember these titles: Shitty Werewolves. <laughs> Sorority Camp, The Red Box Murders, Kung Fu Planet, Dirt Bike Samurai, Lesbian Vampire Ninjas from Space, Don't Call on the Devil, Holy Hellcats, Werewolf Ninjas, Werewolf vs. Sasquatch, Space Surfers, Psychic Friends, and then the torture starts. Chicken in a Hailstorm, Escape from Weed Island, Possessed by a Ninja, Kaiju Ninja, the Blue Power of Whoop Ass, Disco Dracula, <laughs> The Haunted House on Hell Hill, Snowman, Stocking Stuffers, The Carved Orifice, Furry, The World Famous Scottish Highland Clowns, Black Lab Ops, Support Group for Former Vampires, Legit Holes, North American Psycho, <laughs> Non for Profit Murders. House of Nostalgic Nightmares. <laughs> the Scarface of Little Tokyo. The Marky Mark Incursion. Time Turntable. The Mythology of Murder. The Night Stalker. That's like stocking shelves. The Night Stalker. Die, Franklin, die. I love you, ghosts. Creaky Bones. The Florida Man. The Texas Chainsaw Funhouse. The 80s in Florida and die <laughs> with Davina. Okay, so that's movies. Apparently oh we also had band <laughs> God, that was amazing. Holy shit. Not for profit murders. <laughs> Not for profit murders. Is we don't even know what episode that was <laughs> from. I that's what's tell, amazing about this. I could tell based on those uh, titles ex- <laughs> join the freak show. Oh my God. I could tell the exact moment like when I time based on those titles well he also cataloged our because eventually we have to have album names or have band names so eventually violence <laughs> was a man yes. name hiss of yeah. blood was an album back to hiss of blood was the third album we yes. don't know what happened to the second one electric lobster claws was a surf <laughs> band sexual ripoff was an 80s <laughs> band and the famous animals of hollywood was a book <laughs> Oh yeah! So there you go. Oh, thank you, thank Jason. You so really, for, for oh, going back and cataloging God. all of that shit. Bravo. It's amazing. Yep. Bravo! All right, well, Dom Cree. Oh, yeah. Dom Cree has also been Dom. with us since the goddamn beginning. Long Dom Cree. Listener. He says uh, Dom Cree is also Holly Karate Warrior too. Yes, I knew that one. I okay. Knew that one. <laughs> uh, Dom Cree says four hundred. Time flies. It's crazy. The favorite thing is when I legit laugh out loud at something you guys can't believe happened in the movie or some crazy comment that is T-shirt slogan worthy. Oh, and the reaction to Sean choosing Shocking Dark. And if, Which and was, did you hear that silence for three dark seconds? T-shirt. <laughs> that, was, that, was the, that was the reaction. And Pink Dark has its own T-shirt for a reason. There you yeah, go. Dom. If you if you remember any of those other T-shirt moments, we're always taking ideas. We've been spitballing for a while, so send them our way. We have the "I Survived the Shocking Dark" episode. Uh, Simon Carter writes in and says, "I don't remember what movie yeah, it's a was." T-shirt you can buy right now. Right now. 
when he says, I don't remember what the movie was, but the quote, I want to get drunk and fuck in front of ghosts. God damn it. Is one of my favorite <laughs> of all time freak show lines. It was, that the, was the boy. It was, was it the boy? That was the boy. <laughs> okay. The boy, the, the real, was it? Oh, that's right. It was yeah. Yeah. because well, yeah, I'm, after they, know. after they figure that sounds out like something Sean would say, <laughs> it is. that's why he remembers after they, it. After they figure <laughs> out that they're, that what they think is the boy is haunted. They immediately start making out and, yeah. and they're just like, I want to fuck in front of ghosts. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. Now we solved that mystery. The Sean Cole. There you go. Oh. Yeah, for sure. Uh, well, he also says it was the Giver episode that brought me to the freak show, and I've been a fan ever since. Happy 400th episode, guys. Yep, that was Holly's first episode. That Thank you. Episode. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Simon. Uh, so, Wait, Simon? Yeah, that was Simon Carter. So, Oh, and- Simon. Sorry. Thank you, Simon. Thanks, Simon. Happy L says, I enjoy all the podcasts, in particular the Roar the town of the dreaded sundown dread to name a few. I always like yeah. the background info given about the cast directors, writers, and always are well presented and organized efficiently. And I appreciate the passion of each panelist take. Awesome. Thank you. Aww. so much. Appreciate- Thank you. We appreciate really, you so much. Yeah, we appreciate it. We really do do research and we spend like outside time on it. So thank you so much. That's so sweet. Well, Adam Taylor, Right, no, Sean. Uh, Sean doesn't. Uh, Adam Kaler writes in and says, uh, "Yeah." <laughs> well, he says Adam Kaler says my memories are the deep dark personal shame I had at watching the baby and the, the judgment I got from my pets for doing so. My dog <laughs> still won't look me in the eyes. Also, the first time Colin read my first comment on the Saturday Night Freak Show, I was so happy I almost accidentally drove my car into the truck in front of me during rush hour. It meant a lot. Thank you for letting me share your movie watching journey, except for the baby. Never the baby. (laughs) Never the baby. I know the baby. You got to go back and listen. This is apparently the baby was a, uh, was a moment I think in, in our journey. Yeah. Uh, Teresa and the other day, the other day I was telling someone about the baby and just describing it. I was getting angry. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> that was an experience Teresa Ann says I'll always hold a special place in my heart for your Pet Cemetery 2019 episode not only was it the episode that introduced me to your podcast but your reviews were the only ones I agreed with 100% on that bullcrap remake and I've been hooked ever since I mean, I'm going to go on a limb and say that in real life I would be friends with Teresa Ann yeah, <laughs> yeah for real wouldn't we all well, yeah. Chris Pazian says Sleepwalkers because it's an awesome movie and the topic for conversation and the baby for the amount of sheer hate Holly had for that film. Yes. Yeah. Well, Jacob Laws writes in and he says, anytime a comment I wrote gets mentioned is one of his favorite moments, but I also like the Mac and me episode a lot and never forget about the baby. <laughs> yes i picked a good one i guess so <laughs> jesus right. shot i mean yeah, like a finger on the pulse <laughs> all right new t-shirt me dressed as the baby <laughs> just the baby and do you, just Sean, do you really want that like out there if somebody will buy i want wear, that out fuck, there yeah yeah i'll <laughs> buy i'll buy that fucking t-shirt <laughs> i will too michaela how much is that, that one <laughs> yes design I have some pictures I can send you if you need to. Michaela would need therapy just for the design. Of <laughs> well, well, Ale- Alexander DeCastro. Exactly. He says that uh, Mac and me was his favorite episode. So there you go. You have some love. Uh, there's two mentions for Mac and me. Alex uh-huh. Nash says. Mac and me is rivaling the. So far. But Alex Nash says the dog soldiers review. And of course, Sean's oh. abomination that was Halloween to. The TV cut. Uh, I too own a copy of this and have only watched it once. But you have watched it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Michael Whitaker Shut says uh, this is my first year listening to the Freak Show, and they're all my favorite. Well, I mean, I mean, oh. yeah, well, obviously. Thank you. Well, hopefully, Michael, you're for, around for uh-huh. years to come. That's right. Uh, Ghost freaking and talking yeah. podcast writes in and says, "How about when that guy, Nick guy got drunk and was suckered into watching Con Air?" That's right. Nick, <laughs> Nick is yeah. the Ghost freaking and talking 
podcast. You should check his podcast out. He goes hunting for real oh, yeah. ghosts. Jimbo Ice says green slime. Copyright green slime. insert year Saturday Night Freak Show. The Miami Connection monologue. Mm. Anytime my comment is read on I the air. I the think f- we were all crying from laughing so hard during Michaela's monologue from Miami Connection. That was a good episode. That a, that's a great I episode. Get on Cammy and charge people the re- connection monologue. <laughs> <laughs> like that's Doing the Cammy only option. Be like, pay me 15 bucks. And I'll, yeah, the only option is Miami Connection monologue. That's it. That's it. The only one. <laughs> well, Jimbo <laughs> also says. Korean. He says my father was black American. <laughs> <laughs> my father. That's a great movie. Uh, Jimbo. Also, hey. He also says the fact that anytime I found you guys, I had some 200. Oh, he says, by the time I found you guys, I had some 200 past episodes to dig into. And finally the current lineup, you guys have a great chemistry and you guys always make my Saturday nights feel extra freaky. Oh, you know what? I'm just, I'm going to say that next week is our 500th episode just so I can get more of these comments right? I from love all this. the people. Can we, can we just shamelessly be like, we love when you shower us with attention. <laughs> well, CJ Lewis says, you guys hooked me when I was searching YouTube to see if anyone had posted the movie My Boyfriend's Back, which I hadn't watched in nearly 30 years, and I stumbled upon your podcast. I've been rating your backlog ever since. And full disclosure, you guys helped me keep my spirits up when my wife was in the hospital for two months. And for that, among many other reasons, you have a lifer. Thank you for all that you do. And you guys keep it up. Thank you, buddy. They're speechless. CJ, thank you very much. All of you. I mean, seriously, this is uh, it is a labor of love. I mean, we do this just for the hell of doing it. We like getting together. And watching these movies we know that you also have an interest in this kind of stuff and uh you keep listening to us we'll keep doing this uh for as long as we can and here's to 400 more right 400 more um <laughs> yeah um it's been seven years doing this stuff and this podcast has gotten me through a lot and it's because of former members and mostly you guys. Um, I love you guys. I love doing this show and I hope we can do it forever. Please for our wrap ups, because we will not only touch on ghosts, but we'll touch 400 and what that means to us and, and things like that. Cause I know, I know I have a lot to say. <laughs> Don't cut us off now. All right. Well about tonight's movie, which, oh, sorry, Holly, did you have something to say now or you want to wait until wrap ups? All right. I'll wait. I'm, I'm choked up. I'll wait. <laughs> All right. Well, about tonight's movie, Ghost, Michael Whitaker says, I was nine when this movie came out. Whenever my sisters would watch it on TV, I wanted to run screaming from the room. Thinking Please. about watching it I now it. kind of gives me that same feeling. <laughs> <laughs> you secretly loved it, and I know it. <laughs> Uh, well, B movie poster vault says, uh, ghost. I never seen it all the way through. Although according to letterbox, I've seen ghosts of Mars, ghost house, ghost in the shell, ghost ship, ghost of Frankenstein, ghost watch and ghost shark Two, urban jaws. I don't remember any of those having sensual pottery making scenes to be honest, but I just heard black shampoo being mentioned on your uninvited episode. Two things. Number one. Yes, you should watch it. But number two. Be prepared for one of the most whiplash-inducing tonal shifts in 70s movie history. (laughs) Sean's got to watch it now. Travis Legler writes in and says, Well, Patrick Swayze would be a ghost now, so I guess personally rather I'd I'd rather watch him in Black Dog. But that's me. To this day, I've I've never seen the movie. See, I haven't seen it yet. He says, uh, to this day, I've never seen the movie beginning to end. It's like the fifth element, Rocky II, all the Godfathers, and so many others. They're so infamous and have so many parodies of them. You know the story without seeing the original movie. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. You should watch the fifth element, Rocky II. Absolutely. And all the Godfathers. Yeah, you really should. I should, too. You could probably skip Godfather Part Three. Okay. Yeah, well, you can skip it. Well, uh, yeah. yeah. Jacob Laws writes in and says, because of this movie, I know of Unchained Melody and Whoopi Goldberg being in all those terrible movies after this, like Theodore Rex. <laughs> 
Robin Glitterman yeah. Silverberg says Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. You in danger, girl. <laughs> <laughs> Teresa Ann says, ooh, nice choice. Oh, well, thank you. Jim Otto says, no. Oh, it was, it was, it's the, it's the Steve Carell g- gift from The Office. Yes, it was. Uh, yeah. uh, <laughs> Translated so, but, for a couple, and we're fine. We're fine. You don't believe we can make a good episode out of anything? <laughs> not a true fan. Yeah, right, Michaela. All right. So about we can last. Make a good episode out of anything is my thought. Fingers crossed. True. About last week's episode, which was Broken Arrow, Peter Gatt writes in and says, this is a film that's too generic to have a podcast dedicated to it, in my opinion. Um, well, we proved that wrong, didn't we? Didn't we? <laughs> Did we? Oh, you don't have to listen. Broken Arrow and Ghost back to back. To our Broken Arrow podcast. And in our previous, previous week's episode, Pet Cemetery 2 Sean Roger writes in and says, so when are you guys doing brain scan? I'm sure you're going to love Eddie's electronic personal assistant, Igor. Oh, yeah. Does he, does he really have an Igor assistant? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he does. That's been on my list for a while. You have a message master. Yeah. Uh, Let's see. Grant Parrish says, I watched this on cable when it came out back in the day, and I remember nothing that you guys were talking about. Vaguely furlong and formal attire, but the dog heads and nudity don't ring a bell. Is the TV version more edited? Maybe you guys should watch that one. Zing. <laughs> even I think that's a I, shot at Sean. I, I, even I don't think I would watch that. I but don't why not, that. Sean? Where is your bar drawn? <laughs> it's not a straight bar. I'll tell you that. No. You can't resist an alternate cut, Sean. You know it. It's really sure. hard. I will say that. But, man, I do not want to watch Fit Cemetery 2 again. Well, Jacob Kotner writes in and says, while listening to your episode of this movie that I love, I was cracking up and how everything you guys, what everything, how everything you guys hated about the movie is why I love it. The over the top nature, the music, the gloomy fall atmosphere, and of course the furlong. I would take this movie over the first movie any day. You're insane. I, mean, I, <laughs> I think I mean, it depends on what you want out of these movies, right? Like if you want yeah. like a zany, weird, like gory movie, then yeah, like the first one's not going to do that for you. They're just so no. different, you know? Yeah. And like, and like we said on the episode, like if it hadn't been a pet cemetery movie, we probably would have had completely different opinions about it. That's probably. True. Exactly. Yeah. No, you don't watch the first pet cemetery for fun. Right. <laughs> no. You watch it because you feel miserable. Yeah. Uh, right. You just want to, you know, steer into the skid. Well, Maya Madsen writes in and says, Clancy Brown, not afraid to chew the scenery. Oh, boy. Mm-hmm. Wink, Quite wink. literally. The uh, yeah. homicidal homemaker says, I love this movie. Alex Nash writes in and says, call me crazy, but I have fun with this one. I get a great fall vibe during the movie. I do. I really do understand why people like it. I, I get why it's a guilty pleasure for sure. It's okay to like this movie. I'm not mad if yeah, anyone likes like, this movie. I get it. <laughs> yeah. Well, Teresa Ann, she agreed with Alex. She said that uh, I love the early 90s grunge aesthetic of this movie that they were criticizing in the review. And I love the soundtrack, too. It is very grungy. Uh, Feline Fatale says, I love this episode. I'm still one of the defenders of this movie, though. Both Mary Lambert Pet Cemetery movies hold a special place in my heart. And at least Pet Cemetery 2 is far more enjoyable than that trash remake from last year. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> yeah. I think Amen. I'd rather watch Pet Cemetery 2 than the remake. Yeah. And uh, Drew Stevens says, but on the Reign of Fire scale, how would you rate this one? Oh no! See, this is it's not, a four hundred. I know because this is the yeah. four hundredth episode. We're going way back and drawing on like uh, Drew's been around for a while, I guess, right? The, Ooh, dragons! The Rain of Fire scale was in, uh, set up by Tom, who was once on the Saturday Night Freak Show. He said that was the bar of how he judged every other movie above or below Rain of Fire. So, if you've seen Rain of Fire, you can rate Pet Cemetery two. Does it is it above or below? Well, I mean, I guess what does what does he mean by that? Like, is it a high bar or a low bar? 
It's just a bar. It's just a bar. <laughs> that, yeah, that, that's that, not that, helpful. That doesn't give me, that doesn't give me yeah. anything. Like, was Rain Man so bad that it's hard to top how bad it was? Or was it so <laughs> good it's hard to top how good it was? Should we, I need do we need to call Tom yeah. for Horner's episode to get Tom in <laughs> oh, We should have had guests. Right, God yeah. damn it, we should have. brought back. Because I've seen Rain of Fire, but I don't understand how that's yeah. a measuring stick for other movies. Neither yeah. did we. That became, it just is. Yeah, you got to go back and listen to that episode because it didn't make a whole lot of sense to us either. But then it kept no, coming probably, up, the Rain of Fire scale. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, now we're gonna we're gonna throw tonight's movie Ghost to the uh, man. You all sound a lot more sober all of a sudden. I don't know how. That, Isn't that weird? Yeah, yeah I know. Uh, it's almost like yeah. Ghost. Ghost will do that to you. <laughs> um, so up real quick. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna go around the room. We're gonna review Ghost. We're gonna let you know if we would recommend it to you. And we're gonna start with Holly. We'll start with Holly. <laughs> I mean, I can go first if you don't want to. We're good. Just, you and me are going to say similar things. I have a feeling, Holly. But, I, I uh, just, I feel like we've been talking so long. It's been days since I watched <laughs> it. So I know. <laughs> what are your thoughts after having just watched this movie? Right. Um, so I mean, it's no surprise that I like Ghost. That I'm, you know, I'm. Let's. I'm going to recommend this movie. Let's put that out there. Uh, the reasons why I will recommend it are just so just. So many, so many reasons. Like, obviously, it's got the nostalgia factor, but in this case, like, the nostalgia factor doesn't dictate my entire opinion of it. Like, a lot of movies we watch, like, it's it's purely nostalgia is why I recommend it. Like, oh, it takes me back. But this, like, I really feel like this movie, like, centered movies for me as a kid because it's one of the most like most serious movies I watched at a really early age. You know, I was probably like four. You know, five, or five. I was probably like five years old when this came out, and it was one of the more serious movies that I watched at the time. And it really did introduce me to so many, so many ideologies, like about about the afterlife, about like right and wrong, about so many things. Like it really, like you know, we joke about ghost, but it really did shape my view about so many things. And I think a lot of people, you know, feel that way. I think we talked about it earlier that. It's like the it's the first like literal representation we see of good and evil, hell versus heaven. Like we see it happening, we're like, oh shit, this is what this is what it means. Like if I'm a good person, I'll go the white sparkly light. If I'm a bad person, I get shadow ghosts, and that's really scary. You know, as a kid, that's a that's an intense feeling. It's an intense realization, and I think from there, I just had so many I had so many opinions about movies based on ghosts like it just really i i appreciated so much of this movie i i thought it was fun even as a child i thought it was funny i thought it was you know i, I could tell it was well well written you know i think even as a kid you can tell when something is shit sometimes and you can tell when something like okay this is a good movie you can tell you know maybe by how your parents are watching it or whatever i just i understood that what i was watching was a good movie and it still holds up. It is one of those movies that you watch it now and you get those same feelings. I still laughed watching it now. However many years later, the same jokes I knew were coming, I still laughed at it. And it still made me feel like those emotional, romantic things, like those parts made me feel something very real. And I just think that this movie kind of encompasses so many, so many things that we look for in a quality movie that... You know, nowadays, I'm not sure that we get that as often, that we get that well-rounded, we get, you know, fear, we get sadness, we get happy. It was so much encompassed, com- encompassed in this movie. And I just really appreciate how great this movie is. It's it, it's just, I don't know, it's an enjoyable watch, it's an emotional watch. Um, but I, I think it's, yeah, I think it holds up great. I still I still say if this were released now, it would never be nominated for anything. I, I guarantee like this movie would have been a completely different received movie. Um, but yeah, I, I think, I think it still holds up for sure. So yeah, I definitely recommend it. We all love ghosts. Um, there's a reason that it's still a great movie. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to thank everyone. 400 episodes. This is like, seriously, the Saturday Night freak show has, done so much for me in my life you know i've i share with with the listeners that we've heard from that say you know during dark times like it helps them through and that just it makes me so emotional because you guys have no idea 
how much it's helped me through dark times. Um, it, it's really pulled me through a, a lot in my life and I could never thank the three of you or our listeners enough. Cause I love you all so much. You mean so much to me. I can't wait for the next 400. It's going to be great. Um, so yeah, recommend ghosts. Love you all. Thank you for 400. It's great. Ali, I have one response to that. Yes. Ditto. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> all right, Colin, turn it off. We're done. <laughs> We're done. That's it. You can't go out on a higher note. Just be done with it. Holly, it's, um, you said at the beginning of your review that uh, it's no surprise that you love Ghost. Uh, what is a surprise is that Holly did not own Ghost. Yes, that is true. I was I, kind of shocked. I was like, I have Roadhouse. I have Dirty Dancing. I have Red Dawn. I've got Swayze. I didn't have the complete Swayze, and I'm sorry it's, for that. <laughs> it's, I was going to say, it's Ghost. I only got it about like a year ago, so you're fine. But I do own it now, so that's what matters. Yay. <laughs> Sean, you're up. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, it's no surprise just listening to the way we've talked about this movie for the past hour. Um, Ghost is still a legitimately, I think, great movie. Um, it's surprising that it's still surprising that you know a Zucker brother made this movie. Um, for sure, it's, qu- it's quite shocking. Although you can see it come through in the comedy and there is, you know, uh, we discussed how some people are playing a little broad in this movie, but I think it works for this movie. Um, there's some of my favorite parts, the broadness of it all. Um, <laughs> it's a very funny movie. Um, it's a very sexy movie. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, it, well, it is, it's like that, it is, it is. that, uh, that adult, I think this is an adult, uh, uh, a grown person's movie. I, I should say, yeah. um, which, you know, you don't see uh, kind of those mid-budget made-for-adult movies anymore. Um, but, yeah, Ghost is, um, God, it's it's entertaining. Um, uh, yeah, I, I love this movie. I'm glad we could have, like, one more Summer of Swayze moment and get Ghost <laughs> on there for number 400. Um, but, yeah, I really like this movie. It's still really emotional, really funny, still really hits. Um, it's a story that, you know, you know, it's a love story still. So that just, that will go on, uh, forever. So, yeah, I mean, you know, it's ghost. You should, should obviously watch ghost. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I give it four and a half shadow ghosts out of five. <laughs> watch ghost. Colin. Well, yeah, I mean, and that other shadow ghost is just like, it's just like a couple arms and yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you're, you know, I mean, I guess uh, uh, I think you guys were worried what I was going to say about this movie because uh, I was so opposed to it. But it was basically like, you know, uh, my 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 sense of it was is like usually, you know, the freak show mission statement is the highlight weird movies that people don't know about. And this one's like one of the best movies probably that's ever been made. It was the highest grossing movie of uh, of 1990. And, uh, I mean, it's beloved by pretty much everybody who's, who's seen it, except I think I, uh, contemporary critics at the time weren't as enamored with it. The audience has yeah. kind of made it a thing. Oh, yeah. Um, but I mean, watching it again, it's like, I mean, obviously you can see why it works. It has a, uh, a non specific religious, let's well, see, I, I guess it takes the religion out of it. And so it's a spiritual, um, movie about, you know, life and death or the dying process and going, you know, afterwards, <clears throat> there is like a representation of a heaven. There is some kind of shadow ghost that apparently take you away to somewhere. Uh, we never actually go to either of those places. It's, you know, the guy is stuck in, in like a purgatory here on earth. So that's why I think this movie probably plays as well in India as it does in, uh, you know, Peoria. Um, everybody, uh, human beings can relate to the, um, what's going on here i think uh and like i was saying earlier it shifts gears uh very well you know in its blend of genre uh comedy thriller uh fantasy romance you know um it's able to blend all of those so much that at least to me personally i you don't feel the seams it's just kind of like you know you move from effort uh, effortlessly from one tone to the next um Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, what do you say? Ghost is a great movie. Uh, recommended. Mm-hmm. There you go. Boom. Michaela, what do you got? Boom. 
Um, I just want to touch on 400 a little bit before I talk about Ghost. But so I joined the Freak Show early January 2017. So almost four years ago now. And Jesus. Yeah, we're going to hit a point soon where I have been on more episodes of the Freak Show than not been on. And I'm the newest person. So (laughs) it's been a long time and it's been great. And I don't think we would all keep doing it if we didn't thoroughly enjoy it and thoroughly enjoy others company. I know there are podcasts I listen to where it's definitely like a business and less of a friendship. And I, I think you can only sustain that for so long. Mm -hmm. Um, I think there's a reason why we're at 400 episodes still. And we've never missed a week, you know, uh, audio issues be damned. We've never missed. (laughs) Um, Life, life finds a way. Exactly. And I, yeah, it's, I cannot believe it's 400. Like that's, it sounds so much more than 300 for some reason. Um, (laughs) Cause like we just hit 300 and that feels like that was not that long ago either. Yeah. But I just, I thank all the listeners for like sticking with us. I know what, sometimes when lineups change of a podcast, that can be a hard thing for people to go through and want to keep listening. I'm sure we have lost people and we've picked up new people, but it's, it's some, I mean, we'd be having these discussions whether they were recorded or not. That's, this is just a, how we talk with each other. Yeah. So, so it's nice to know that we're not always just shouting into the void, you know? Um, for sure, but ghost. So the reason why I picked this is because I knew it would be a passionate discussion one way or another. And I thought for our 400th episode, we deserve to have something that we knew would not be like a total disappointment. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I was like, I know three out of four of us are in love with it. Colin, I know has opinions either way. So (laughs) either way, it's going to be like a spirited discussion. So spirited, not ghost. (laughs) I love the uh, nuance of this movie. I think that that's something that is lost on a lot of the movies nowadays. I think that, Sean, like you were saying, this is a purely adult movie that doesn't really get made anymore. Like, movies have to touch every demographic now. They can't just be made for one. And that's really unfortunate because you miss out on good stories like this. Right. And, like, one of my favorite things about this movie is when she, like, the first half of the movie, Demi Moore is wearing his shirt after he died and that's something that if you've like grieved the loss of someone you understand those kinds of weird choices like the desperation to feel close to someone and so to me whoever wrote this movie has like a good understanding of what grief is like um and i think that's what makes this movie so good and so delicate in the way it handles these things i just one more thing i could talk forever about how much i love this movie and all the things i love about it but we've talked a lot already. It's It was a formative movie for me. It is my worst fear and also my greatest hope in one movie. Like, I'm terrified of being widowed and watching my husband be murdered in front of me. That's the worst thing I could ever imagine. But the best thing I could ever imagine is that I get the closure where I get him telling me everything's going to be fine. Yeah. That's all in one movie. That's crazy. Yeah, that's <laughs> so, nice. yeah you have to watch Ghost. Absolutely have to watch it. Can I say this was, I I think this was the most excited I've ever been for any of our movies on the show. I was so excited for this movie. It was like an occasion to watch it for me. It was like a special like event. Like it was so fun. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's just Um, because you haven't heard what next week's movie is going to be yet. Oh boy. (laughs) Well, uh, Michaela, you were talking about Demi Moore wearing his shirts. Um, It would have (laughs) been quote unquote funny. If she like kept the bloody shirt that he got murdered in, <laughs> and was wearing that around, that would I mean, have been like I, next level. I would have laughed. You're sick, like Sean. That. You're uh, sick. That's, that's the one she goes to bed with. Um. Oh yeah. Uh, but uh, next week. Oh man, I feel like oh, we've gone through a lot here tonight, guys. Um, <laughs> next week, uh, we'll be watching a movie chosen by Colin. Uh, Colin, what will we be watching next week? Well, four hundred and first episode. <laughs> I don't have lofty aspirations. We're going to bring you back down to the basement. We're going to watch a movie that, well, I don't know. You guys may have a special interest in. I don't know. We're going to find out. There's a lot of dog lovers on this show. So we are going to watch Zoltan, the Hound of Dracula. That's right. A.K.A. Dracula's dog. (laughs) I'm intrigued. Sounds interesting. He's a vampire dog. Like Superman's, okay. Superman's dog is this like crypto? <laughs> right. Dracula's dog. 
Zoltan. Uh, so, oh, no. <laughs> so that'll be next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. Thank you for sticking with us for 400. We hope yes. we'll be there for 400 more. And until then, the basement is going dark.